Greetings, greetings, and welcome to Chronicles of a Nonprofit, episode 38. Today is September the 5th, 2023. I am Dr. Darina Shine, and I am here with you today, thanking you for being a part of Chronicles of a Nonprofit. Our mission here is to help new entrepreneurs with the highs and the lows of their business concept and how to put the perspectives of morality, ethics, and value into building their brand. And that's why we're here today. I'm super excited because I want to share with you an article that I ran across in the Forbes magazine business section. So we're going to talk about establishing a credible brand for your business today. And I need you guys to jot down the valuable points that you feel relate to your business. Now, everything that I'm going to talk about today is not going to truly relate to every business. So that's why it's important for you to take down your notes and decide what is more important for you. So... I'm going to give you some tips on being a credible business. Now, I know when I started my brand in 2006, I didn't know too many people, but I did get an immediate response on business consulting. It was interesting. It was, I was so amazed at the people who believed in me, you know, Um, I'm going to start with one, a few of my businesses. Um, I had a church that believed in me that wanted to get their organization, you know, up and organized, um, a health transportation service who wanted to get up and, you know, set up for the future as well as a shredding company. And now you see shredding companies all over, but back then, It wasn't as popular. But these ideas came to me during 2006, 2007, maybe eight, nine, when I was really and truly just tapping into what I was going to do with my business development. So in these businesses, they gave me the tools that I needed to become credible So as they paid me, I did my part. As I did my part, they approved my part. And they continued to pay me like that. Um, I really started out saying that I wanted a payment plan so that others wouldn't be so, I guess, feeling as though they paid for something that they didn't get as a service. So I tried my best to work with them on that level, and I still do to this day. And and so now I have tenants, I have uh, investment individuals who invest in me. I also have sponsors who believe in me. I have individuals who come to me with the focus of being credible. And so to build the brand, it takes a lot. And it's a step-by-step process that makes people want to consider you as a business. Now, one thing we will learn is that based on how we perform our business, if we're thorough, if we dot our I's and cross our T's, we're going to get that name in the in the credibility brand that we are very focused on our business and that's what we want right so that's what I want to talk to you about specifically today so mm, credibility in the business 72 percent of U.S. consumers say that it is more important than ever to shop with brands whose values they believe in So now you're going to have competitors out there and these competitors are going to give 
clients the best opportunity and they're going to compete against you. So if your price is X amount of dollars for something, other people, customers, consumers, clients, they shop around. They go on Google. They get the reviews. You know, a lot of people don't give reviews in our community of business development where I'm at. And I ask them to, whether it's good or, you know, whether they feel that they you know, want to share certain things. But a lot of people are afraid to say much of anything online because of the ability to be sued. So you're not going to get those reviews as much as you would if people just started out giving reviews. Being consistent is the key. That's the critical role that's going to make you set aside and give your brand the critical credibility that it needs in order to be known as an authentic and transparent business. So we're going to look at ways to build your credibility. So what is credibility? When we look at the definition, credibility will say and be defined as the quality of being trusted and believed in. That's it. So if you just do the next right thing based upon your business, that's why I say the majority of entrepreneurs can't be taught how to be an entrepreneur. You have to already have experienced the pathway and come into the business with the moral fabric of how you're going to run your business, what rules you're going to have in your business, how that rule and regulation will connect to the business. So if ever you are in need of maybe a lawsuit and and getting someone to feel that um, a lawsuit may be necessary, you'll be able to protect yourself, okay? That's one of the reasons for credibility. That is definitely one of the main reasons for credibility. Um, and then you have your brand, your logo. Your logo means a lot. When we put our logo out there and we say that this is something that represents us, it's true. It's very, very true. Um, You want to be able to make sure that people know that you're the real deal and that no one else is coming into the territory to make it something that it's not. So you want to have your logos, you want to have your concepts, and the way that you build your business is going to be a vital way that people can get to you, definitely. So the business world is all about branding. It's all about being credible, trustworthy. It's about setting the competition to the side and doing what you do and not worrying about the competition, but setting them aside letting them know that no one will be able to tap into what it is you do because it is genuinely built inside of you. Mm -hmm. As we build the brand, as we learn from experience, as we commit to dedication, we're going to find that people are going to mention that. Because 56% of customers stay loyal to brands that get them, that understand where they're coming from, that put them in a position of power to make them realize that I can trust this company. I can trust this company with my information. I can trust this company with, you know, the way that I think. Okay? Now, coming in again entrepreneurs. You have to be careful not to allow a customer to take over your establishment, your brand, your your technique because they feel entitled. There's a difference. So being social proof means that 
you're on social media, you're moving around, you're actively functioning, people are watching you. There's a lot of people in the bushes that will watch, but they will not respond because they're waiting to see the the crack in the in the process. They're waiting to find a weakness so they can pry upon that. Now they'll quite They'll, they'll respond to certain things that just don't make sense. But if you're on the right path and no one's responding, no one's liking, do not take that personal. Take that as a compliment. You know why? Because a lot of people are really looking at you as the diamond in the rough. They're hiding behind the camera watching, but they will never give you the accolade that you need. But who cares? As long as they're watching, right? So I need you to understand that. Humans tend to adopt the the patterns of behaviors that their situation requests. And they're inclined to make decisions on how other people do things in comparison to how you do things. So entrepreneurs, it's important to know that if you have another company down the street that does the same thing that you do, your clients or new clients or clients who are inclined to respect you is going to come to you because they're going to say, hmm, that is amazing. I like the way that they do this. I feel safer. And when you're an entrepreneur, a business developer in that field, you're more or less like an attorney because you have to know the researchable laws. You have to know the concepts and principles and terminology of the craft. You also have to know that you're going to give advice on what is to come for an individual who trusts and believe in you. And guess what? (laughs) If you don't give them the right advice, they're coming to you. They're coming for you. So social media is a great tool, but it is also a tool that will look at your weaknesses and pounce on it. So know that, you know, you do people the right way and you make sure that these people honor what it is you're doing and you pay attention. So that way, if there's ever anything that does come up, you'll be able to understand where that person is coming from and then explain it. Now, mind you, some people are not going to like you. Some people are going to come in not liking you. You don't know that. You think they're a trustworthy customer, but their goal is to come in to sabotage. So you got to make sure that you're at that point. Remember that spectrum Treat everybody with the same level as they come in so that way you know exactly. You're not thrown off guard. So like I said, number six is my spectrum level. I keep that at that level until someone otherwise gives me a reason to lower my my regime. You know what I mean? To make sure that um, I feel comfortable enough to lower my spectrum level to three or four. Also, putting people into your collaboration, uh, some people like to, and I really don't feel this is necessary as an entrepreneur, but some people like to call the influencers to the table for them. Now, yes, if you're just starting out, you're an entrepreneur, I think it is very vital that you have someone in your, in your flow of service, in your brand, speak for you. Because that builds credibility, right? So I remember when I first started out back in 06, 07, I called in Kai Storm, which is an African-American author. And she's from New York City. Um, We flew her in. We had a seminar. She spoke about what it was about to being a writer, what the highs and lows was in that arena. And this is how Chronicles of a Nonprofit was already born into the Scales to Success seminar project of 06, 07, because I'm doing it today. 
So, so bringing, and I'm speaking about it today, I'm still continually empowering people to tell their stories and be unique. Now I'm doing it. I'm doing the storytelling and the concepts of recognizing others online. You see, so things are already seated and planted for you. That's why you don't have to worry about the future. You just do what you do. And I guarantee you everything. My entrepreneurs, everything will come into play. Um, collaborate. Be careful who you're partnering with and sharing your stories with, though. Because other people are hungry. They're looking for a way that they can be on the top. They can be in a competitive market. And they can market and brand certain qualities. And then label it and title it as their own, which it is it would be theirs, their own. But what it is, is that you don't want so much competition that the person can go down the street and get the same client services. You know, you want to be different. You want to be authentic. You want to be genuine. You want to be real. You want to be, you know, you don't want to duplicate services. Because when you do that, what happens is others will become the norm. Put it all together. We looked at uh, telling your story. We talked about that. When you tell your story, you put your own spin to it. And that's the creativity and uniqueness of the Skills to Success LLC project here in Youngstown, Ohio. The very thing that I learned very well on in the uh, portfolio building of my overview of my business was to make sure that I met people exactly where they're at and that I would never duplicate the same service twice. So if at times energy is coming, it is the most creative, unique idea and I get that person up and on their journey to practicing what it is that they want to manifest for themselves, they're doing the work. I'm just like the cheerleader. I'm the pilot. You know what I'm saying? I'm taking them on their cruise ship to their success and they're not alone. So with that being said, I will be that forerunner with them. So when they turn around and look, they'll see the genuine connection that we had. And that's vital. That's very important. So telling their story, telling their story is what we want to get them involved in. We want to, as an entrepreneur, we want you to be involved in telling your own story, getting familiar with the story, so that when you tell the story, people won't find cracks in it. They're going to say, oh, she said that so many years ago. Or, oh, I remember that story. She always, you know, she always points to that narrative. So be authentic. Because people are going to say, hey. You never said that before. And admit your mistakes. If you are wrong, if you have done something, make it a public service announcement. That way, an individual can't find that information about you because believe me you, everything that you do is online. So that's why I give my name. It's fine. You can look online all day. You'll find everything about me, everything about me. And there's nothing that can be done about, it. <laughs> you know, and you can't tell the story. And I'm talking about people who look at the scenario and try to manipulate it. No one can look online and find anything about me that I haven't already expressed. And when you're that authentic, when you're that genuine, oh, 
the haters can't do anything to you. Nothing at all, because you have turned your, your, you know, situations into victory. You know, and yes, we all fall down. We all make mistakes. No, even the seasons teach us that there's going to be at least one time a year, we're going to fall. Even if we come into the season of fall, (laughs) you know, there's spring to grow, there's summer to enjoy, there's fall to decline and make your mistakes and learn from the mistakes, and then there's winter to heal from that, to get ready to grow again. So if we know this, and it is something that is a value of who we are, then no mistake can ever be used against us, so try not to hide it. If you've been caught in a uh, infidelity situation as a married person and you feel that that's not going to get out as an entrepreneur, your goal is to make sure that you don't get yourself caught up in another infidelity because some of the women in your business, and this is for my male or my female, you know, the LGBT community, It doesn't matter. There could be someone set to sabotage by coming in as a decoy and playing the game, not because they like you and they can be the most handsome, the most sexy, but they can also be the decoy that's just trying to prove that you're still a cheater. So you got to work on that. Any addiction must be worked on before you go into the concepts of studying your craft and building credibility around your brand. And then finally, don't be so separated from your engagement audience. They're engaged with you for a reason. You know, I just had a dinner for my tenants at my house, my houses. And I, we all went in together, made dinner. We enjoyed the holiday. And I let them know that I value you. I appreciate you. You are a part of my day-to-day life. You are my functioning. And so with that, I engaged. And as I engaged, I found so much out about the people in which I service. I found a lot of things, good, good, valuable things. So today we have um, talked about establishing a credible brand, being honest, being transparent. So having a high brand credibility means that your audience trusts you. My clients trust me. My learners, my entrepreneurs, they trust me. I'm just not a person with a fast mouth that can can talk the game of how to brand your business and make a billion dollars and all of that. You'll find that out. No one can teach you that. That is your passionate expression of how much you put into the credibility of who you are. And that follows you. Just like if you're in the ninth grade and you get an A and B ratio every single semester. Then you get into the 11th grade, and then all of a sudden it falls down. Now you're getting C's and D's. People are going to say, well, what happened? You used to be so on it. You know? So these are things that are valuable that you need to understand and um and put yourself in a position that you're going to be this entrepreneur. So if you have any questions about the concepts today that we've gone over, please email those to me. Um, Your emails are very valuable. Your views are very valuable. Your likes, comments, and your shares are extremely valuable. I appreciate everyone for everything that you've done. This Forbes magazine article is on how to create 
a credible brand and that is a good article that you can go back to and review. Um, I thank the Forbes Magazine Business Journal for putting that together and stay on it. Stay your your authentic. Stay your authentic entrepreneurs. And we thank you so much and we'll see you next time.